Yeah. Good evening. This is the second session on ward rounds. Uh, I usually, as I explained in the first round, we talk about general topics. And uh, we finished the first half of it last time, talked about various things about post-op general care and talked a bit about the ERAS in the end. And today we focus on some of the tubes that we use. Of course, even the first time we talked about the nasogastric tube and the PEG. Today we have we look at a few more tubes. And from the for the subsequent sessions of ward rounds, we will be looking at specific operations. You know, different kinds of operations attract slight differences, and you know, focus will be on certain other things that you need to look out for in certain operations. So that'll be the the focus for subsequent rounds. So today we will look at the general aspects again, and. Uh, we start with this that Abdul talked about. Nikita, what is this tube? Are you there? Can you hear me? I don't see Praveen yet. Can you guys hear me? Can somebody? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello, Praveen sir. is there. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay, Praveen, if Nikita is not there, you take it. What is this tube? Uh, uh, slang stick and tube, sir. Slang stick and tube. What makes you think it is slang stick? Uh, it's, it has three way. All right. Okay. Sink taken is three or? Look at the distal line. Look at the distal. Yeah. Is this how it hangs taken tube looks? At the distal end? No, sir. How many it's balloons? Not, will, how many balloons would it have at the at the distal end in a sink taken tube? Uh, Two balloons must be there, yeah. sir. How many are there here? Only single balloons. So what is it? Yes. That's precisely why I put this tube and not the conventional yes. one that others would put. A Foley's tube, sir. Yeah, it's a Foley's catheter. Yes, sir. So what is yes, uncon sir. unconventional about it? Uh, so it has additional... Uh, yeah, it has another England, lumen, right? Yeah. Why would, why, why would somebody use that for a foliage? Uh, Have you seen a tube being done? Rails tuba? Uh, no, sir. For additional... Uh, uh, what do you purposes. use it for? What, what additional purpose? Have you seen a TUR being done? Sir, no, sir. Transurethral resection. Not, not seen. No, All right. no, sir, not at sea, yeah. sir. Take it, Vinod. Take it and tell me what it is. Sir, it's additional uh, for irrigation, sir. Irrigation. So when yes. you expect a lot of bleeding and a lot of clots, which can happen after transurethral resection of the prostate or a bladder tumor, you would want to irrigate the bladder. And that the third one is because of that. All right. Let us forget the third lumen sir. now. Okay. Let's say it's only two, two lum lumina that are there. So what what are what are they for? What is what is the main one and what is the other one? Come on, some answers. Sir, Mr. Praveen. No, Praveen. Sir, uh, sir uh, one is for the outlet of the urine into the All right. brain, sir. All right. And another is for uh, inflation of the balloon by the saline, sir. All right. What is the capacity of the balloon? Uh, 50 ml sir 50 have you seen the have you seen have you seen a tube so, tomorrow morning the first thing you do is go and yes, see sir. the see a foley's yes, all right sir. okay it actually specifies different foley's will have different volumes different volumes it can vary from 10 to 30 50 is a very rare thing if at all now how much would you inflate anyway if if the if the 
So if the uh, catheter says you must put 30 ml in, how much would you actually put in? What is the sir, purpose uh, of putting that in? Sir, uh, normally we put uh, 10 ml, sir. Why, why not 30? For the... In we know fear of risk. Why not 30? Why only 10? Why not 2? Why not 5? Uh, if it is very minimal, it may come out, sir. Okay. And uh, and if you increase m much more, it may compress on the vasculature of bladder. Would you really do that? No, sir. No. Bladder, you know, what is the bladder capacity? Around 400 cc. Yeah, 400. 300, 300 to 400. So if you put 30 ml in, what is the problem? Will it compress the bladder? No, sir. No. So what is the reason? It irritates the trigone. Okay, sir. All right. So yes. when it irritates the trigone, they want to keep passing urine. Yes. They will have a constant urge to keep passing urine because that's one of the things that initiates the urge to pass urine. All right. Yes, sir. So irritation of the trigone is the reason. So you put a minimal amount, which is about 10 ml. It could be as low as 5 ml. Where it doesn't come out, it is big enough not to slip out, but not too big as to cause irrigation, irritation of the trigone. All right. Now, what is it used for generally? We mentioned two already. Yes, Nikita, are you there? Uh, yes, sir. Okay. What is it used for generally? We have already mentioned two. You mention it again. Uh, one is for uh, urine, sir. I mean, uh, drainage of urine. Drainage of urine. Uh, Second is... Irrigate it if there is hematuria. Yes, sir. It All can right. also be used uh, uh, for uh, pressure, sir. I mean, during the internal bleedings, uh, in such cases, the balloon can be used for the compression, sir. Compression of the prostate. Correct. Prostate. You can actually yes, pull it after a TUR, you can actually pull it back into the prostatic urethra. Not generally done, but it can be done. Yeah, you can, you can, you yes, can do that. Okay. What else? There are yeah, many uh, uses. You can use it to measure yeah. urinary output. Yeah. Our, hourly urine output. You want to measure that. You can do that. Okay. What else? What happened? You un you muted yourself, Nikita. Sir, I'm sorry, sir. I'm in emergency. All right. Then we'll yes. we will spare you. All right. Yes. Sir. All right, Praveen, you take over. Yeah. Yeah. My 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 sir, general request sir. to all of you, if you're in emergency and doing something else, I understand that, but don't participate. Either tell us or don't don't log in at all. When you log in, you must be focused on the class. If you are otherwise busy, genuinely I understand, don't log in. Okay. So that I, I will not know otherwise. Okay. So Praveen, you take over. You can measure urine. Sir. You can compress the prostatic fossa, not commonly used, but has been done, particularly in the past. Nowadays, if there is prostatic bleeding, you would much rather go in again, you, using a resectoscope, go in again, see where the bleeder is and stop it. Yes. What else can it be used for generally? There is one other pressure measurement you can use it for in the bladder. What is that? This is for the final years. Sir, abdominal compartments. Correct. Be... Yeah, you correct. You measure it. Measure the the intra cystic pressure is the abdominal intra abdominal pressure. So if you're looking at abdominal hypertension or compartment syndrome, you can use the same thing to measure the pressure. Okay. So you see, so many uses of the Foley's catheter in the bladder itself, and what are its other uses outside the bladder? Go on. Who will take it? Indraja. Sir, uh, we can uh, use it like uh, in uh, like uh, poly polycystostomy or feeding jejunostomy. Yes, polycystostomy, feeding jejunostomy, gastrostomy. Yes, sir. 
formal duodenal fistula. If you have a hole in the duodenum, you can put a foliage in and control that formal duodenal fistula, it is called. Yeah. Can you think of its use in some kind of bleeding? Sir, in case of laparoscopy, port side bleeding, you can... Yes, you can inflate it and pull it up. Correct. <clears throat> Anything else? Varicell bleeding, sir. Varicell bleeding, foleys are not used. Sengstacken is used. It's the, the balloon is not big enough to obstruct or block the OG junction. In major vessel bleeding, okay, if you have a trauma to a major vessel like the aorta, for example, and if it's bleeding, until such time that you can get control, you can put a foleys, in fact, two of them, if you like, above and below, through the hole in the major vessel, inflate the balloon, both sides. So you're actually isolating that part of the damaged vessel. You can also use it in situations like a, like a aortoduodenal fistula. If you have, if there is a bleeding from, very commonly it happens after, um, you know, a prosthesis gets infected. So if you have a bypass graft, which you have inserted onto the aorta, and that may get infected and that the bubble gets stuck to it. Most often it is the duodenum. So you'll have an abnormal collection connection between the aorta and the duodenum. It's a life-threatening situation. So when you go into these situations, you of course, you have to put a clamp, isolate the vessel and do something to block it. But to buy time, otherwise they'll have torrential bleeding. You can use the very same foliage and put it in and inflate the balloon on both sides above and below the area where the aorta is, uh, is uh, damaged or is open. And, you know, you can control the bleeding. Okay. In my life, I've had one opportunity to do that because there was a spontaneous uh, aortoduodenal fistula, which is a very, very rare condition. Okay. So that is, these are the other uses of folies. Now, Vinod, you take this. What are the precautions that you take when you insert a foliage? Um, st sterile yeah. condition. Okay. Walk me through the processes. Yeah. From uh, you are asked to put a foliage. Walk me through the whole thing. Yes, sir. Um, I'll use first uh, a sterile gloves, sir. You will first talk to the patient about it and tell him what you're going to do. Yes, sir. Yeah first and then and then i'll uh, um poison the uh, patient sir okay and then i'll use the sterile gloves and uh, i uh, i ask for a sterile set for uh, um insertion sir yes and i'll uh, make ready of uh, uh, lignocaine gel in, in 10 cc syringe if it, okay. if is the patient okay and uh, uh, 10 ml of uh, sterile uh, water sir mm -hmm. and i'll uh, paint at the genital area. Mm -hmm. Let us talk about male catheterization. That is more involved, you know, forget about female. Yeah, go on. Male catheterization. Okay. What do you do? How do you clean the area? Uh, from periphery to center, sir. Okay. And then, and finally, in the uh, uh, penile uh, prepuce area is retracted back and the, uh, okay. uh, at the tip of the penis is uh, cleaned the, uh, at, at right. the end. Okay. And then I'll insert, uh, I, I'll drape the area, sir. Mm -hmm. And then I'll insert the foliage. No, no, you'll insert something that you took in a ml gel. syringe. Yes, sir, lignocaine gel. How much will you put in it? Um, sir, 5 to 10 cc, sir. All of it, okay? Yes. 10 cc easily. If you if you have a, a fresh, new, you know, lignocaine, jelly, the whole thing, you can empty the whole thing into it. Yes, okay, not a small amount. 10 ml is a minimum. Just push the whole thing in. And then what do you do? I'll, uh, first of all, I'll uh, give the pressure in the terminal tip, sir, to prevent okay. uh, exiting out of uh, gel. Good. And then I'll uh, open the uh, foliage. How, how, how long later will you open the foliage? One minute, sir. One minute is too too short. Two to three minutes. Okay, sir. You have to hold on to the penis, make sure the lignocaine doesn't come out because it has to work. Yes, sir. 
takes time to work and then you open up the folios and you push it in yes sir all right now you're pushing it in it goes in easily yes sir how do you know you're in the bladder uh urine has to come all right has to yes, come sir. out of the other end of the folio. yes sir. it doesn't come out what are the reasons uh maybe because because of lignocaine it may take a little time sir jelly okay and uh, the terminal end might be blocked sir might not be it may be blocked or it may not be in the, in the bladder in the, in the bladder okay so what do you do uh, first of all uh, to pre, uh, to rule out lignocaine gel i'll wait sir okay and i'll give a super epidemic pressure okay that doesn't work what do you do uh, i'll try to suction with it. suction yes. doesn't work you push some saline into it yes, the main channel yes sir okay that will then open up and you will get a bit of urine and then what will you do then i'll uh, connect the bag sir and then i'll uh, mm. yeah, yeah inflate the bulbs all right how much we said 10 ml yes sir even 5 may be enough at times and then you gently pull it back to make sure that it is sitting at the in the bladder yes, vesico uh, ur urethral junction junction all right and yes. you make sure that the urine flows well yes. then what do you do the most important thing that you do at this stage and i'll uh, uh, pull it, uh, pull back uh, the perpetual skin sir excellent pull it back if you if you don't pull it back what happens parapimosis correct all right so pull it back and that is a very nice smooth catheterization yes. suppose when you're pushing it doesn't go through what do you do Uh, uh, i'll wait uh, in that position uh, to work the lignocaine gel in that area sir for around 1 or 2 more minutes again okay it doesn't go in uh we can use dilator sir ah oh. what is a dilator when would you use it would you use it no sir I would you, you do something before using a dilator guide wire sir choose choose a smaller diameter catheter Yes, if you used 14 use 12, 12. 10 and do it yourself yes. so beyond this only an expert should do things yes okay what are the things that tell you that you should never ever progress and call for help what are the things during catheterization one of them is the tube not progressing bleeding sir bleeding blood at the meatus must tell you that we should not do anything and call for help senior help okay but you must know you will be a senior one day and uh, you must know what the seniors do yes. so what are their choices uh guide wire they will use sir mm -hmm. is it a guide wire or it's called a urethral sound yes. or or a stillet yes a stillet which put which is put into the catheter okay to the main channel of the catheter and and then they bend it a little bit in the tip it, and man maneuver it to get into the bladder if possible yes. if that doesn't work you can use a dilator yes sir but none of these things are done blindly nowadays okay one of yes. the best things is unless you know unless it is you can use these two things if unless it happens very easily people do not traumatize the urethra it may you may have to do it under vision with a cystoscope cystoscope okay call a urologist and do it but before that he may not do it in the middle of the night yes. so what option do you have to relieve the patient suprapubic uh... correct you must do a percutaneous suprapubic puncture or, or a cystostomy drain the bladder relieve the difficulty and then you can involve a urologist who would do these things so this business of a stillet in the catheter dilators or urethral sounds uh, all that has to be done by specialists and not by residents or surgeons in training okay yes, yes, all right sir. abdul you have any questions or doubts at up to this point no sir no yeah because you are the one who asked about the bladder yeah sir residents cannot do the dilator no i do not think resident should ever do the dilators they just do not 
if they do it it must be done under the direct supervision of seniors because at night sir in uh, in at our night i am talking yeah. about it that is exactly why i am saying this at yeah. night <laughs> i know this is what happens okay yes, at least you as a registrar if you have done a few dilatations with you know under the and with the help of seniors you must come and do it or the consultant must come or you do a suprapubic if not a cystostomy just do a suprapubic aspiration okay painful acute retention of 5 600 ml of urine just stick a nice uh, gel co into the bladder and aspirate it and that will carry you through the night and then the morning the urologist can take over all right okay yes right pavan complications sorry indraja you have a question <coughs> Sir, uh, are you talking about contraindication, sir? Like later or? No, that will come now. That will come. Okay. That will come in a minute. After yes. complications, we'll get that. Yeah. I'm looking at you know the easiest ones, the correct ones, the little complications, and where you should not do it at all. Go on. Complications first. Next. Uh, sir, uh, <clears throat> if we in inflate the balloon in the middle of the ureter, it may leads to urethral rupture, sir. Okay. Um, balloon dilatation if you did yeah and uh, sir uh, in case of females uh, what i observed is uh, they can't able to find the urethral opening and vaginal foley catheterization also uh, yeah, must be extremely unusual here ha ah, okay that's mostly because because of embarrassment the women will be squirming and you will be uncomfortable and you do not find it proper otherwise it should be pretty straightforward to see the urethra in the female yeah go on and, uh, how can you take so long yaar that rupture is one yes, without without inflating the balloon can you damage the urethra Mm, no sir you can if you go if you push it through you can have a false passage false passage okay yeah. sir you will rupture the urethra mostly at the bulbar area and then it you will get a false passage all right yes sir it's so easy to understand all this with any tube anywhere there are two or three common complications what are they ah uh, sir displacement and blockage displacement blocking stress yeah i mean do i need to tell you this no so you might have put it in the right place but it may slip out yes. that's a complication you may think it's right and it's not right it can get blocked and when you put a catheter into any of the tubes anywhere particularly the bladder you can introduce infection so okay so infection yes. is a problem and if you decompress a grossly distended bladder suddenly they get <laughs> what immature why do they get immature uh, sir uh, sudden decompression <clears throat> leads to hyperemia of the bladder mucosa and that can cause hematuria okay. okay so these are the complications that may be there okay there are certain situations where you do not catheterize at all what are they uh, sir uh, structure sir structures in the urethra why do you say you cannot catheterize at all you can if you can get through this i was going to come through talk about structures now uh, but let's i'll i'll talk about that's the last bit of my discussion on bladder i mean on catheters but where would you not catheterize at all sir in case of uh, trauma yes trauma and <laughs> suspected uh, urethral suspected rupture urethral rupture sir okay so what what makes you suspect a urethral rupture the blood in the tip of the meatus sir yes bleeding from the urethra blood in the tip of the meatus and and or the perineal swelling a perineal hematoma okay sir okay if the bulbar urethra is damaged and ruptured you can have a perineal hematoma okay, okay and the third sign that may be where there is a rupture and the bladder actually floats up because of the complete rupture not usual but can happen okay sir what happens how do you know that that has happened clinically uh, sir abdominal distension will be there that will be there everywhere 
and uh, there because of the having, uh, sir hypotension tachycardia that is all general specifically for suspecting that a bladder has floated upwards because of a rupture of the urethra very high prostate on rectal examination okay sir it will not be low down as the way it should be because the urethra gets ruptured beyond the prostate prostate you know bulbar urethra is a common thing for perineal injuries so the bladder actually floats up along with the prostate and so when you put your finger into the rectum prostate will be much higher than where it ought to be all right so when these are there you do not catheterize at all there is one other condition where you do not catheterize particularly in the female why would be that it's a relative contraindication not an absolute contraindication urethral caruncle caruncle yes painful condition you go and fiddle around with the bladder there then it's an issue okay so yes. you if the patient is in retention because of a caruncle you have to specifically treat the caruncle first and then catheterize rather than blindly catheterize but if you can't take get out you know get any help for dealing with it you can it as i said it's a relative contraindication not an absolute contraindication okay so urethral trauma and perhaps caruncle in the female are two relative situations where you do not catheterize okay sir. okay now when you we talked about stricture the last part is about strictures where would you expect the stricture to be what are the common narrow areas of the urethra sir membranous urethra sir okay is that the commonest one prostatic and prostatic urethra uncom prostate yeah because of the prostatic enlargement yes i agree bulbar urethra bulbar urethra. that's where the bend is particularly if the patient has had previous instrumentation either catheterization or a cystoscopy bulbar urethra is very common submeatal stenosis is very common okay. all right prostatic urethra is common and if you have done procedures on the bladder the bladder neck is another in, is another area where you can have narrowing narrow. so why is this important to know and of course you must understand a non urethral narrowing is a tight phimosis you may not even be able to see the external meatus with a tight phimosis yes sir so how do you at your level deal with these things uh, sir in case of a tight phimosis sir. okay what do you do uh, sir uh, it, i apply a lot of jelly yeah. and gently gently i will with the help of artery forceps gently i will stretch the skin sir all right if it doesn't stretch <laughs> what do you do stretch the four skin sir with the help of arterial doesn't artery. work doesn't work it's very tight what do you do you still can't see enough of the meatus to get a catheter in uh, sir you uh, do a dorsal slit give a local anesthesia and do a small that. dorsal slit of the prepuce okay, then you will have an opening which is big enough for you to see the meatus if it is a sub meatal stenosis how would you know it is there submetal stenosis i don't have idea sir just think about it you don't have to have an idea it's just under the meatus what do you do you can dilate it this dilate. is one area where you can you can put a little dilator and see that you can you know when the catheter doesn't enter at all okay, okay so you can either do a meatotomy which means just like you cut the prepuce you can cut the meatus just a little bit half a centimeter okay oh. after giving local then try to get it in or do uh, use a little dilator to get at the submeatal stenosis not mm -hmm. more than 1 cm or 1 and 1/2 cm should you go in okay, okay. So. anything proximal to that bulbar urethra or prostatic urethra bladder neck and all that will be the domain of a specialist do not yes. do anything more so only at the tip of the penis if there is an issue either in the meatus submeatal area or the prepucial area you are within your rights and you know it's simple enough job for you to do it yourself and see if you can get a catheter in okay no, not yes. otherwise all right any questions doubts and comments niranjan you have anything to add nothing sir 
nothing abdul no sir nothing to all any topics yeah any any questions no all right now okay vinod come in and say what is what are these tubes drains sir these are drains all right tell me where would you use a drain when we suspect a collection one uh... after after the surgery sir if you suspect a bleed or uh, there is a chance for collection and potential collection yes. okay so when you suspect a potential collection you would put a drain in to drain those mm -hmm. alright okay what where else uh, suspect a bleed collection of fluid pus blood they are all the same in the yes. sense We have, we have covered it by one word collection okay. okay where else if there is already a collection to drain a collection yeah, either either yeah either percutaneous or post operatively you can put a drain to drain that collection when it is already there yes all right is there anywhere else that drains have been used have there been any other quality Uh, a diagnostic quality that has been assigned to drains i've given you a direct hint abdul so the content of the secretion yeah the sense i think you are indirectly giving that a diagnostic capability that has been attributed attributed i, mean, I don't agree with it but i just say it has been said so detect drains you know leaks from anastomosis you put a drain yes. in that area so they say you can diagnose an anastomotic leak earlier if you have a drain in in place that's yes. not necessarily true as you will see with evidence based information as we go along okay yes. but anyway so types of drains depending on use prophylactic and therapeutic we mentioned that prophylaxis if you suspect a collection therapeutic when you already have a connection depending on the type what are the things that you know of indraja sir it can be open drains or in the closed drains sir good anything else suction drains suction drains or active and uh, passive like yeah suction yes. drains or gravity drains gravity drains yeah yes. and there are some special drains that you have okay open drains and closed drains in the closed drains you can have either gravity drains or suction drains and there are some special drains can you think of one names of one or two special drains okay we'll go along as we do that yes. okay open drains can you be can be a glove drain or a corrugated drain a closed drain when the suction or a gravity drain and a special drain can be a sump drain we'll talk about the sump drain in a minute now what is the difference between a corrugated drain and a glove drain and where would you use it pavan yes, sir <clears throat> uh, corrugated drain in case of a post operating after hydrocele surgery okay uh, if we suspect any like collection we will uh, do corrugated all right all right and, uh, what is the difference between a corrugated drain and a glove drain that's basically i'm asking they are both used for the same purpose but what's the difference between the two sir uh, it should all be generally subcutaneous you can't do it in the depths corrugated can be in the depths you can even have a long drain put into the pelvis and it comes out of the abdomen not done nowadays but it used to be done quite commonly earlier so the corrugation is a just stiffer it's a stiffer tube it is broader than a glove drain it can be longer it can be used in deep cavities whereas a glove drain is generally a soft thing it's made of a finger of a drain of a glove in fact it's usually only for subcutaneous tissues and where you do not want a stiff corrugated drain to cause pain or damage to sensitive areas like the perineum okay that's where you would use a glove drain now open drains these are all essentially open drains you know anything which you, you cannot you cannot close with anything but is there a way in which you can make a corrugated drain a closed drain 
or even a glove drain, a closed drain. Go on. It's very easy. Pawan. We, we can make it like a tunnel kind of thing. No, put a colostomy bag on it. Normally, these drains, you okay. just have a, a padding, okay? A, a pad as a dressing, so it comes out into the open. It can soil the area. It can, you know, it can make the thing moist. It, it's okay in a place like perineum where you can give them a, a, a sits bath and keep it clean, change the dressing two, three times a day. But if you find that there is something that is put into the abdomen, not done commonly, I don't do it at all, but there, some people do do it. One of the ways you can cover the area and collect the secretions is by putting a colostomy bag around that drain. That's possible. But it's just for your information, not many people do it. A closed drain can be a suction drain or a gravity drain. When would you want to use a suction? When would you be happy with a gravity drain? Uh, sir, uh, in the case of um, uh, uh, modified radical MRM case, sir, we will close. Use principles. Use principles. When fascias are completely closed, uh, okay. so whenever there is a negative pressure. Uh, Good. Collection. When everything is closed, when you can get negative pressure, you would put a suction drain. Suction drain. Why would you want to put a suction? Uh, sir, um, so the negative pressure uh, with the help of the suction, it will uh, suck the whatever collection present. Why do you want suction other than just gravity? Uh, sir, because inside pressure is more than... Sorry? Uh, sir, uh, inside positive pressure will be there. So the suction pressure will suck the... Why collection. do you want suction at all? It is more efficient than just gravity. Okay, sir. That's all. very simple. It sucks out better than just gravity. Okay, and you can use a smaller tube for the same degree of uh, you know affluence or an affluent coming out, the fluid coming out. If you use a gravity drain, you have to use a bigger bore tube compared to a suction drain, which can be a smaller tube. What is the advantage of that? So Less I, pain. I... Less pain. If you use a big tube, it causes more pain. It will be stiffer. Whereas a suction drain, a smaller diameter tube will be equally efficient in pulling the fluid out, but will be smaller and less painful to the patient. Okay? Yes, sir. Now, what is one big advantage of closed drains over open drains? Sir, uh, the uh, soakage and all won't be there. So dressing okay, patient, patient the comfort. Mm. Comfort, yes, sir. Okay. And uh, when the wound is open, yes. you can actually introduce infection. Yes, sir. From the outside. Okay. Yes. So, if you have an open drain, for example, in an MRM, which is a clean situation, and you keep changing the dressings three times a day, fluid coming out, open wound, because open where this drain is coming out, it can be a portal of entry for organisms. So, Open drains have to be by and large discouraged unless it is used for a very short time. Closed drains, as I said, suction is better. What are the downsides of a suction drain? Sir, uh, sir uh, if pressure is, if uh, suction is not there, it won't work. Sir. That okay. means, uh, all right. And if any blockage is also there, uh, it won't work, sir. Yeah, that is true for gravity drain also. Indraja. Have you guys read about these things? You must you are using drains every day. You are third year students. Huh? Should you not know why you use a drain? What are its advantages and disadvantages? It's like sutures. is everyday use, no? Yes, sir. Yeah. Should you not be thinking about these things? Please read about everything that you do. Drains, Riles tube, catheters, insufflators, light source, monitors. You know, knowledge just won't get into our brains by imbibition. You have to work for it. So what, what can be a disadvantage of, of suction? You can suck it, tissues in. Yes. Okay. If the suction is high, you can suck tissues in and that will block the drain. 
okay which won't happen yes. with the gravity drainage and second when you keep sucking all the time you do not give the chance for the tissues to come to an equilibrium many times when there is exudation of fluid in an operated area if the pressure rises that pressure itself will reduce the uh, exudation or the effluent of the you know or the discharge of the fluid whereas if you keep sucking you're always having a negative pressure and that keeps drawing this fluid from the operated area and so you may end up with a very long period of suction okay of 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 discharge so that's one of the disadvantages that's why after about 2 to 3 days when you think that there cannot be too much of an exudation in the operated area you can use the same suction drain as a gravity drain how would you do that Pavan. By, by releasing the pressure, so no that's need of all. any suction, sir. Yes, that's right. Don't, don't, it's called the charging the suction device, that bag that you squeeze. It's called charging the suction device. Don't charge it. Don't squeeze it. Just connect it. It's still a closed drain and it is a gravity drain. And you will find that that way you can sometimes get control on the suction, okay, on the, on the fluid that is coming out. Now, in general, what are the disadvantages of drains stuck into the body for a long time? Infection, sir. Infection. And blockage of the tube. Blockage, good. Uh, suction drains, like it may also suck the tissue, sir. Yes, I've said that already, yes. And displacement, displacement I told you that. Yes. It yeah, may come may, out yeah, it may not be where it should be. Okay. Something specific to drains. Anything? Think about it. What can what damage can a tube sitting inside a cavity for a long time do? It can, yeah, it can erode into bubble, it can erode into blood vessels. Okay, so it, it has been described. So you can have problems of the drains actually getting into a big blood vessel or getting into a bowel, adjacent loop of bowel and giving you a fistula. So these are the important things. So you have to understand the principles of putting a drain in. Okay, this is very simple. You cannot drain a general, the general abdominal cavity. So if you have diffuse peritonitis, purulent or feculent, and you have drained, you have washed out everything, you have removed the source of sepsis, like say a perforated meckles or something or a perforated appendix, then there is no point in putting drains everywhere in between the loops of the bubble and here in the paracolic gutter, there, pelvis, everywhere. You cannot drain the general abdominal cavity. You can only drain defined spaces. The two in a limited manner. So, what are the defined spaces in the abdomen? You want to have a go, Praveen? This is a simple enough question. Defined spaces in the abdomen. If I asked you, where would you get intra-abdominal abscesses? Where, what would, what are the spaces that you mentioned? Sir, in the uh, hepatic crisis, sir. Okay. Subhepatic space. Sub -hepatic okay. Space Supra hepatic. Sub diaphragmatic space on the right. Sub diaphragmatic on the left. Okay. Yes. How can you stop so quickly? Okay. Come on, Indraja. Sir, Sir uh, right and left uh, subhepatic space. Yes. I... Left subhepatic space. You'll have to educate me on that. Where is um, the left subhepatic space? Sir, I mean uh, lesser sac. The only lesser sac, I agree. Yes. Yeah, sir. Okay. You and, can drink uh, the lesser sac. Paracolic gutter, sir. Yes, the two paracolic gutters. The gutter. mm. And the pelvis. <clears throat> yes, sir. Pelvis. Yeah. These are the only defined areas. So depending on where you are at, where you are, you know undertook your operation, these defined areas can be drained. And remove the drain as soon as possible. Usually, it won't be more than three to five days. 
very very important okay so if you leave it for longer the downsides will override the advantages and particularly if you have ascites there's no point in draining it the same principle of exudation is even more applicable in an ascites all right so if you keep on draining the ascites it will keep on coming out so it will never never stop so take out the drain if it leaks you can even put a stitch on the drain site and allow the ascites to occur with a bit of a distension and an increase in the abdominal pressure there will be an equilibrium and once the inflammation and the reaction to the operation comes down ascites usually settles down unless the patient has chronic liver disease which is giving the ascites so remember do not we already mentioned about the complications uh, do not drain for a long time unless it is a very very special situation which is actually very very rare all right now we talked about primary objective if prophylactic drainage prevented anastomotic leakage i told you that i would discuss it uh, further down and this is the point where i would like to discuss it people really thought that if you put a drain in that it may not you may reduce anastomotic leakage far from the truth you do not need a drain for either diagnosing it or for preventing prevention is not possible if it leaks it's going to leak and this review which is a very substantial review the cochrane review it also looked at mortality wound infection reoperation extra ab abdominal complications in the two groups drain without and no drain and absolutely no significant you know no statistical significance in these two groups intra abdominal abscess is a common thing okay and as i said apart from prophylactic drainage you can use it for therapeutic drainage to look at or to drain either image guided aspiration and drainage or operative aspiration and drainage all right and this is another large review around 2800 patient okay the presence of a drain after elective surgery they looked at colon was a risk factor for ssi okay both deep space infection and wound infection were higher in patients who had drains so a routine prophylactic drainage of the paracolic gutter or the pelvis after a colonic surgery is really not warranted even though most of us do it many times unless it is deep in the pelvis unless i've done a very low anastomosis where i've had a lot of dissection in the pelvis i don't necessarily use drains i definitely don't use drains after right or left hemicolectomy sometimes rectal operations because they can be quite oozy uh, i might use a drain for 48 hours definitely not leave it in 4 5 days to detect uh, a leak that is not required leak will manifest itself if it if you are unfortunate enough to have a leak in so many other ways and you need not have a drain to detect a leak okay now can you tell me what this drain is on the left where my where my pointer is pavan sir yeah. the perineal region sir correct what does the drain look like here i am looking at the drain glow, sir glowed glowed drain sir it's a glowed drain that's all it's a finger drain one of the common areas where i use it is after a perineal repair this is a repair of a recto vaginal fistula so it's a nice soft drain i leave it in 48 hours and it will prevent a hematoma in the recto vaginal septum where we operate and if you get a hematoma there and that gets infected is a higher chance of your repair failing and you're getting a recurrent recto vaginal fistula this is a corrugated drain okay not it is stiff and you may, you may even make it narrower if you have smaller uh, smaller areas of operation usually used for draining subcutaneous spaces for 24 to 48 hours this is a suction drain we know that and you can have a closed gravity drain instead of not charging this this bag one of the other alternatives is to use an adk a drain like this and just put it to a closed system where it will drain it will drain into 
this kind of a bag, which is very similar to a urine bag. That's a closed gravity drain as well. And this is a sump drain. Now, anybody knows about sump drain? Abdul, you want to take this? Sir, it is a multiple perforated tubes, sir. Correct. With a reservoir. No reservoir. It is just a gravity. It, you can use it suction also. In fact, I have yes. used suction here. But what is the principle of a sump drain? Same as suction drain. Same as suction drain. Then why is it called a sump drain? More in the like uh, deeper planes where the it is there. I have given you the text there. You just read it. A drain consisting of an outer tube vented to the outside with a smaller tube within it that is attached to a suction pump but have multiple perforations that allow fluid and air to be carried away through the suction tube. Right. So why did, what is venting? So uh, venting is uh, changing the direction of the no, it allows vent. some fluid, some little bit of air to come in also. You know, you have a vent is something that allows you to something to either get out or get in. If you expect a lot of debris, like in pancreatic necrosis, okay, I have used oh, really? this, I have, I have written it here, you see, post pancreatic necrosectomy. That area has a lot of debris. So I, you know, commercial sump drains are available, but very expensive and I don't I don't know if you get it in India. I've used it abroad. But I make it myself. I use an ADK on the outside and the suction drain on the inside and put a couple of stitches here, which is not necessarily water airtight, definitely watertight, it's not airtight. Put a suction here. So when you do that, the outer tube, which must with multiple holes, will be patent because of the venting that is that is effected through this double lumen, as it were. And the inside tube will suck out all the fluid there. Okay. And you can also use one of these tubes as an irri irrigant, as an irrigation tube. Both of them need not be sucked out. You can use one of them to put sterile saline or betadine, dilute betadine solution through that necrosectomy area. And the other tube will bring it out. So this is a sump drain, which is basically vented. That is the word that is used which is used in areas where you have, you expect a lot of debris. And one of the commonest areas is uh, pancreatic necrosectomy. Okay. Any other question? All right. I think we will stop here because I have two more sections. I took longer than expected for this class. Uh, and we will we will have another class on it for general issues, okay, where I'll be talking about uh, this. We already have an, ex uh, have an idea of what it is and then certain other tubes that we use, okay? Is that all right? Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah. okay. I think uh, talking about it too much in one day will probably be boring for you. So let us just stop, stop here and then we'll have another class maybe later this month or early next month when we have another ward round. Okay, any questions, yes. doubts, comments? Sir, uh, just in case, if there is drain output is very regular, sir, hmm. um, more than 200 ml per day. Hmm. So should we, uh, what kind of intervention can we use? Sir? I mean, we can't remove it at the same time. We can't keep on continually having it, sir. You will have to know why it should be so high, 200 ml per day. If it happens for more than four or five days, then you're really talking about a fistula. Okay, so you have to then investigate to make sure that there is no fistula. You can either do a oral contrast enhanced CCT, for example, or do put some contrast into the drain itself and see whether there is a communication into any other uh, bubble or something like that. Otherwise, it is unusual for you to get a large uh, effluent without a communication with, you know, it could be a urinoma, for example, maybe it's coming from the urinary tract. Maybe it's it's a pancreatic fistula. Maybe it is a bowel fistula, if it's bowel contents in it. If none of these things are there, it could be a biliary fistula. If none of these things is there, it will be an ascites. As I said, it'll just, it is just fluid 
and no other thing. If it's urine, you can check for urea. Bile will be evident. If it is pancreatic that you suspect, you check for amylase. Bowel will be uh, evident through the contents. So if it is just pure water with perhaps some protein in it, no amylase, not bilious, not enteric, and no urea, no high urea, then you're talking about ascites. And in ascites, as I said, take your drain out and let it let the nature balance it. And you can give them some diuretics and make sure that there isn't too much of an ascites. When you take these drains out, what you must remember is that if it is ascites, it keeps leaking from that hole that was there. So you have to put a figure of eight stitch on the skin and close it and just pressure like we normally do. Put a little pressure dressing on it will not work if there is ascites. Okay. Okay. Sir? Yeah. Sir, any complications or contraindications particular to the sump drain, sir? No, some, no, no, nothing at all. It's like any other drain. Uh, you don't leave it for very long. That's again yes. uh, uh, standard rule because particularly in the pancreatic bed, erosion into blood vessels is very common. It can erode the splenic artery. Uh, it can, uh, you know, it can erode the, if it's near, near the head, it can erode the gastroduodenal artery. So bleeding is very high. So don't leave it for very long. Okay. Yeah. Sir, glove drains are how we are, how we can make How do you do it? Activity? Yes, I, ju I just I just take a sterile glove and yes, cut away one finger. Okay. If you want it longer, you can make the cut, you know, into the into the palm area also. Make it longer. Just the finger length may not be enough. So make it longer and then open it on the side so that it just opens out, and then just shove it into that little cavity that you have. And yes. because it can slip out very easily, I put a little stitch in the very end, and uh, you know, two days, three days later maximum. I take out that one little stitch that's holding in place and pull the drain out. Okay. Yeah. Niranjan, your final comments and uh, concluding remarks and we'll close the class. Sir, it was very good, sir. Uh, nothing to add. Nothing to add. Nothing okay. To All right. Okay. Good night, guys. And we will meet again maybe right, next sir. month for the next ward rounds. All right. Good night. Good night. Sir. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night.